Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar on the value of data analytics. My name is Christian Rowland. I'm a senior practice director here at TIG. I'm super excited to walk you through today's content. Let's get started. Business analytics is a massive conversation. But I think at the root of it all where we start is that in this new digital economy that we're all in today, Data is a key resource that we all have at our, at our disposal, whether it's through sales that we make uh, to our customers, through quality information, through even information that's available out there on the public internet, such as population data, uh, economic data. There's a mass amount of resources that we have today that quite frankly, we just never really had in the past. And that with all this data, the business analytic aspects of it really allows us to bring clarity and to gather insights about the decisions that we make in our business or organization each and every day. Now, it would be wonderful if we could just grab all this data and have an automated source that goes through and parses it and makes that business analysis for us. But there's a lot of things that are preventing organizations from really capturing the value of the data that they are able to collect or presently collect today. And they range from a multitude of different things, but we'll just highlight the top three here. One, there are so many different data sources that are, that are out there today. And some of them are, are even siloed, maybe uh, owned or organized from uh, uh, separated for internal politics reasons, uh, et cetera. It's tough to map out a comprehensive data strategy taking into account with knowledge of all of the different sources of data to be able to produce the meaningful outcome of what you're looking for. The second challenge really comes around data governance. And the fact that data in many cases and in many organizations is truly uncontrolled or it's controlled in a silo. And gaining access to that data becomes not only a challenge technically, but more so even politically, as some people maintain this data and keep this data as the source of, of their control and their value in the organization. And that lack of sharing it uh, prevents an obstacle for those that are trying to gather all of this information together. And lastly, and, and I would say that this can't be emphasized enough, is that there's a tremendous lack of skilled resources on the marketplace that can understand not only the technical aspects of the data itself, all of the different terms that we use in, in business analytics, all the different structure types and the volume of data, et cetera, but how to produce meaningful business insights out of the data and to be able to weave and entangle the, the uh, science of walking through this data to produce the tangible insight that you're looking for. And when we're talking about data and producing those meaningful insights, there are really four Vs of, of big data. And, and these are some of the challenges associated with big data. First comes down to volume. The amount of volume of data uh, was a significant, um, I'll say, obstacle for many organizations, surely because to work with uh, a large sample size of data, it required complex infrastructure, it required complex compute, uh, a number of different things which in the early days really prevented organizations from, from dealing with the, just the mass volume of this. This has been controlled somewhat uh, by the cloud and, and even a very small organization can parse through mass amounts of data to add value. But volume is a key factor. The amount of, the sheer amount of data that has to be processed, uh, whether you're looking at it from a traditional corporate IT spend or whether you're looking at it from a, a time to value, um, those are things that, that you need to think through. The second thing that it comes down is, is the velocity. And this is the amount of time that it takes from which the data is able to be received and processed and, and, and acted upon. Um, in getting that meaningful insight. So 
you know, one of the examples that I could share with you is uh, I have the opportunity to work with um, major league sports teams. And one of their challenges was uh, around, you know, players coming on or off a, a waiver or a draft. And literally when someone gets uh, waived, there's a very, very small amount of time in which scouts and management can analyze the data to pick up that particular individual to see if it was a good value for the organization or not, and what it is that they may be able to offer them and if it fits in well with their team and their present day statistics. So the velocity of the data, crunching those numbers and, and getting the results of that in two business days is going to be far too long to be able to make that uh, decision intelligently from the point in time you get made aware that the particular individual is let go to the point in time you need to contact their manager. So, you know, one of their insights was to take this, you know, couple days where the analytics and really shrink it down to, um, you know, literally amount of minutes to be able to produce a meaningful insight once they got word that a player was let go uh, inside their league. So velocity really is key here. Variety. There's a ton of different types of data. Talked about structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. Uh, all of this comes into play in how you construct uh, your data warehouses, how you construct your analytics strategy, and being able to digest multiple different types of data is absolutely key. And the value of data. Um, you can collect a lot of data in today's world. As a matter of fact, you can over-collect data in, in many cases. But what you need to look for is the amount of value or if there is value in retaining that data or summarizing that data and what type of outcome or value can be extracted from the data which you are holding. So anytime that we look at, you know, big data projects, we always look at it from kind of a four V's perspective to make sure that we're really capturing what the customer is ultimately looking for. Now, of course, you always have to look and analyze what the market is saying and what the data trends are in 2018. So let's go through a few of these here. I won't highlight every single one of them because, of course, we can uh, all read the screen. But, you know, the number one trend is really around mastering the data. What data are you collecting? What is it really going to do for your organization? How can you aggregate that with a multitude of sources? And really understanding from a data quality management perspective how you can better your insights based off of managing your data better. The second trend that we obviously see is around data discovery, ultimately visualization. Being able to tell that story with your data and be able to illustrate that story to very high level executives in your organization. And whether that could be through a series of dashboards or graphs or pictures, and obviously knowing the type of data to go after, absolutely fundamentally key. Self-service business intelligence, allowing department heads or end users access to the data to be able to construct and make their own analytical equations uh, to be able to uh, produce an outcome or result which they are specifically looking for. So basically opening up your data warehouse, your analytics platform to allow end users into that and be able to structure data at their own will. Data governance, this is absolutely fundamentally key. Um, for a multitude of reasons. One, structure of data and the ability to, you know, construct insights out of it. But primarily from a security perspective, um, we see a lot of companies today, uh, even public entities that have uh, public and private uh, partnerships, information sharing. We see data being exchanged across a multitude of different company, companies uh, in a B2B perspective, and obviously the collection on the, the B2C um, type businesses as well. And all of that data uh, generally comes at a cost, and that cost is all the, the security concerns and the rules and regulations that are subject to the data that you're collecting. Obviously, if it's anonymized data, you have a little bit more leeway, but if you get into uh, very specific structured data, there are a lot of rules and regulations that you have to um, uphold to 
this isn't a security conversation, so I won't go down into every single one. But in, in most recent years, we've seen some of the, the most stringent data protection standards, uh, both here in the U.S. and, and across, the, uh, across the pond in Europe as well. Uh, data preparation, analytics, modernization, all of these type of things that are also very, very hot trends. I'm not going to belabor the point on this at all, but it is absolutely fundamentally key that data is top of mind. So moving on here, there are different stages of data analytics. And this is, you know, and we tend to associate this in the industry with kind of a maturity model around business analytics and where an organization ultimately is in their preparedness uh, and adoption of data analytics strategies. And first, we'll start off with phase number one, or stage number one, which comes down to visualization and storytelling. I think this one's pretty easy. I talked about it a second ago which is being able to look at your data sources, uh, containers, warehouses, et cetera. And what you're able to do is you're able to put together a dashboard, a picture, a report, um, some type of visualization, which will allow you to paint a story of your data to those that are able or need to make decisions about the data. And this is absolutely key. This is generally kind of the introduction phase into some data analytics uh, process because visualization helps um, those that are, are maybe not as familiar with particular variables and outcomes to become quickly oriented with the scenario that they're dealing with. The second one, uh, second phase that we look at is descriptive. And I think these kind of go hand in hand, visual, visualization and descriptive. I, I often see these paired. And that's really from a, a present time and reverse looking back and understanding what has happened from a data perspective, from a sales perspective. What has historically happened uh, for sales in an organization going down to their branch level, maybe even going down to a product line level, and understanding historically what has transpired. And, and that's absolutely, I, I think, fundamentally key. Uh, while it's in retrospect, uh, that helps you know, lay out, uh, I'll say, a map at least of where you've been. Now, the third phase of maturity comes down to something that's called predictive analytics. And predictive analytics, what it does is it looks at not only what has happened, but it looks at other factors that you can build into the data. Maybe it's how the economy is doing. Maybe it's, um, you know, student enrollment and grades and performance. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make a model based on existing trends, present time uh, sales, present time enrollment, uh, of what will happen in a quarter from now or what will happen uh, a year from now based upon the historical data, the present data, and then, of course, uh, some future data or expectations of that future data to be able to predict what is going to happen in the, in, in the future. And I'll say the, the last phase here really is prescriptive data analytics. And you say, well, what is prescriptive data analytics? Prescriptive data analytics is when your analytic models are able to look at, I'll say, historical information. They're, be, they're able to predict what is going to happen in the future. And you're able to put into a, a variable or to a context what you want to have happen. Based upon all of those criteria, it's specifically able to go out and say, if you want X to happen, then you need to take these steps to be able to change this model. And so it gives you a, an ability, a picture of what you can make happen in your business and how you can make that happen, as opposed to just, you know, predicting what may happen or looking back at what has happened or simply looking at a graph. It really hones in on your specific scenario and your specific um, outcome that you're looking for so that you can drive and choose to make something happen. So, you know, the value from data can look like a lot of different things. Um, 
and, and I'm going to go through just a brief list here of, of what some of those outcomes may be. And I think some of them are, are very rudimentary. Obviously, you can do things like increase revenue, increase market share, uh, creating new market opportunities, entering into markets that you didn't even know existed uh, or that you wanted to enter into, that you needed to enter into very rapidly. Looking uh, at a business from a customer satisfaction and retention perspective, uh, I know a lot of businesses and, and even TIG, we, we are one where we have a you know, customer for life philosophy. And that's not only from a customer perspective, but that's um, you know, a customer satisfaction perspective. Uh, but it's also looking at um, how we're able to take care of our customers, how we can better our own internal processes, um, things that we can do to incrementally improve to help become a better, more competitive organization in the marketplace. Looking at competitive insights, using data to be able to predict or assess what your competitors are doing, even what the industry may do, that's obviously an aspect. And creating operational efficiencies within your own organization, uh, a key outcome, looking at where costs are being incurred, how those costs are being incurred, where can they pot potentially be optimized? All of these are fantastic examples of business level outcomes that you can see or realize from approaching data analytics with a um, uh, pre-planned pre process uh, and, and uh, expectation of a desired outcome. So briefly, let's take a look at some data analytics use cases um, by industry. So retailers, retailers absolutely key from a, um, from a couple of different perspectives. First, from an optimizing staff allocation. Uh, so you think about the time of year, maybe the time Black Fridays or um, you know, busy time of the year comes up for a particular retailer. The last thing that you want to have happen is a slew of customers come in, they're targeted buyers, they have their coupons in hand, and ultimately they go to the shelf and they can't find what it is they're looking for because there wasn't staff available to replenish the shelves with that product. Um, or if the product is on the shelf, maybe they have a question about a particular product and there's no one on the floor to be able to answer that question. Uh, with the competitive forces of obviously online, online retailing, and, and the type of delivery methods that are being innovated each and every day from, um, you know, same-day delivery to drones. Uh, it's really important for re resellers to create a customer experience um, uh, through multiple avenues, and one of them obviously being optimized staffing, ensuring that they're not uh, overstaffed in particular situations, and, and in other cases, what's well, really important, making sure they're not understaffed. Uh, and there are many other use cases for data analytics, but, but that's obviously one that comes to the top of my mind. Second use case will be around education. Um, and higher education, uh, a multitude of, of factors here talk about, you know, soliciting for the right student base. So making sure that you're able to, once a student enrolls, keep that student for previous years of enrollment. Um, looking at increasing um, you know, I'll say on-time graduations, making sure that students are able to get the classes that they need to uh, get to achieve their degree or um, uh, education in their specified field so that they're able to um, showcase a better result to ultimately their, uh, their students and that they're able to, to deliver on that result. And there are a multitude of different things that, that go into that. When you look at particularly attrition rates, you look at economic factors, when you're talking about getting the right students, is it really just about grades? So do, you know, how much do academics play into it? Um, uh, geography, um, you may look at uh, scouting teams, being able to recruit the right students. So a, a lot of different things come into play, particularly in higher education when you're talking about data analytics. Um, in, in K through 12, what we're really looking for from an analytics perspective is what is going on with the student. And we talk about seeing the whole student, not just the grades that they get, but taking into account, um, you know, their, their progress through the course of the year, their progression, 
obviously their grades, their attendance, uh, maybe what their, their online activity is, their, their whereabouts, using Wi-Fi location services, and being able to get a whole 360 degree view of that particular student and that particular student's behavior. And particularly in K through 12, this is also becoming a student safety concern and how you can identify a particular individual may be at risk for, um, for performing, uh, unfortunately, some um, you know, unthinkable acts. Uh, and healthcare. So healthcare is really important from a data analytics perspective. And you know, one of the top um, healthcare initiatives right now is reducing readministration rates. Um, uh, readmission rates, excuse me. Readmission rates, if a patient were to get checked into a hospital and that patient uh, ultimately leaves, gets discharged, dismissed, they go home, they come back you know, within like a 24 hour period, um, the insurance companies frown on that. And in many cases, there are actually financial penalties um, for having someone go back to the hospital uh, of the actual hospital themselves. The insurance company says, well, we're, we're only going to pay you a limited amount or we're going to pay you, um, you know, maybe less than contracted rate. Or in some cases, maybe we're not going to pay you at all because you let this person go too early just to free up a bed. So, you know, in addition to reducing readmission rates, there's also patient recovery time and uh, a quiet initiative that's gone on through healthcare and how they can help people recover more quickly. Those are different types of use cases that you see from data analytics that's really occurring by the industry that produces meaningful, tangible results that you can quantify uh, financially with dollars and cents. So who is succeeding in today with, in the game of analytics? Um, take a look at this real quick. Those that are doing well are organizations that share their data internally, they've reduced their silos, um, there's a strategy and an approach to being able to better leverage data, and there's a, a constant flow of, of betterment. And I think that's really important because those are the, the foundational underpinnings of a good um, data analytics strategy is at least internally you're able to get the teams together on the same page, you're sharing useful information, and you're, you know, to some degree you have a strategy on how you can um, work with that information, whether it be from a visualization perspective or you look at it for historical value, um, that's a really good place to start. The people that are doing slightly better though, are going to be those organizations that take their data strategy and they begin to share that data or gather data from outside their company. So, you know, one of the use cases here is um, looking at a, a competitive field like, uh, we'll say, the food service industry. Going out to independent sources to gather information about, you know, I'll say, uh, reviews on a particular uh, restaurant or chain, um, expansion uh, models where restaurants are expanding. Um, maybe there's even some, you know, outside marketing information that you would want to get for, you know, maybe another competitor's type business to send them advertisements. Using and sharing that in information. Um, not only internally, but externally, allows you to gain inner, better insights into your business and potentially what is happening and what could happen in the future. And, and those that are really doing the best at it, and, and I'll say right now we see um, there are a number of, of companies that are doing well here, but generally those are the companies where data outcome uh, really is a key business strategy, if not even their own product that they sell and they go to market. And they're able to take advantage of a multitude of different uh, data. They're looking, you know, from a competitive strategy perspective, they're looking at it to um, take these data sources and drive new revenues, analyze new markets, um, how they can grow their organizations, which geographies may have uh, income, how uh, citizens are moving to said states and 
potentially that's a new market opportunity for them or what customers are buying off the shelf. And they're really looking at their business, their data, 360 degrees, analyzing it inside out, upside down, and specifically looking on the outskirts, right, data that is available outside of their organization to drive the actions and behaviors of those organizations. And those really are companies that are winning, uh, we'll call it winning in analytics today. They have the foundation. Once you have the foundation, they start sharing the data. Once you start sharing the data, looking outside of your organization, then you can step up the game and you can really turn into, you know, what I would consider an innovator in today's digital economy, taking actions based on that data. So all this boils down to, you know, your analytics strategy. And we'll have a few tips for, you know, how organizations should get started when it comes to uh, big data and business analytics in particular. The first tip is that data should drive decision making at every level of the organization. Um, some may view this as, as um, you know, I'll say an implied statement, but it truly is. Uh, foundationally key when you look at how decisions are made in your organization, whether they're made off a of whim or whether they're made off of generally some type of model. That model could be historical sales, um, that model could be a structured business plan, but what type of data is backstopping that and is data really driving that decision? Second tip is that in order to be successful with a data analytics strategy, that philosophy needs to be pushed from the top down into the lower tiers. Oftentimes we've seen some successful pilots that are, um, you know, uh, I'll say grassroots projects internally to a department and they're trying to achieve some small outcome and, and they're very successful. But as a whole, because data really propagates throughout an entire organization in, in, in different ways, customer base, people, um, maybe what you, you spend on staff, et cetera, all of these different departments hold this data. And then if you're not driving it down from the top, then what ends up happening is each of these departments try to keep their silos of data and there's not necessarily an initiative to share that data or a vision to share that data. And, and that's really where you find that you're not able to get total value. So driving it from the top down, at least in our opinion, TIG is fundamentally key to, to making this a winning strategy. The third tip is that the culture of an organization the DNA of an organization really needs to start being about the data. Obviously, absolutely, it can be about customer service and your value. Data is not going to supplant your value as a business, and I'm not suggesting that. But the culture of the business should be one that's incredibly data aware and understands the power of data. And not only the process of data collection, but what the data can do for that business to further be able to enhance your value proposition to the market for which you serve. And that really is fundamentally built into the culture and how that is, is done. Obviously, we talked about the top-down um, vision, but it's also done through continual education and examples of what maybe other competitors are doing in the marketplace or even innovation being created within. Third, or the, excuse me, the fourth topic is that it's critical that there's buy-in across the organization. I talked about data silos and what happens uh, when data does become siloed. It's incredibly uh, important that there's 100% buy-in to the strategy or else you're gonna have blind spots or potential blind spots in your strategy. And that is something that even the smallest blind spot can get multiplied into a, a very, very large hole when it comes down to 
to uh, analyzing or justifying a decision or an outcome from the data which is being created. Lastly, seeing is believing. And what we mean by that is in order to get this buy-in, generally um, biting off a all-inclusive big data analytic strategy for an entire organization can be a very expensive proposition. Um, and to a degree, where we found the most success is in pilot groups, leveraging um, particular instances or test cases to allow uh, a department, series of departments, or even a private-public partnership uh, in exchange for money uh, to be able to power uh, a pilot or uh, a net new insight that they're looking for in a very small capacity. And what that does is it, it builds credibility to the overall structure, uh, the, the methodology of the data collection, uh, the purpose for analytics and showing that there are tangible returns that can come from data. Absolutely. So our approach around you know, big data and analytic TIG is it's a simple one. It really, truly is simple uh, when we look at, even though we're trying to drive complex outcomes. The first part comes around data warehousing. And this is where you get into the data management, the data sources, all of those challenges which we talked uh, about earlier in, in the conversation. We specialize and can help an organization structure a data warehouse to centralize this data and apply data government, governance, policy, security to ensure that the data is not weaponized against the organization, the data is kept secure, and that you have one central point to apply your intelligence. Absolutely fundamentally key. The second piece of this is using our business intelligence knowledge to look at that data and to draw out meaningful insights based on our consultative conversations with our customers. And this, to a degree, kind of talks about that skill set gap. Sometimes what you'll find is the skill sets are very, very technical. Maybe not, uh, maybe not as strong in the business, or in other cases, very strong in the business. Maybe not uh, as strong in the technical. And the ability to for those two skill sets to kind of meet is absolutely imperative. So where TIG comes into the mix is we're able to sit down and have those business level conversations, meet with different departments, talk about the insights, uh, KPIs, what's driving the the metrics for that particular company. And we're able to come back and digest that into a strategy of business intelligence. And then we can turn around and, and create uh, dashboards and visualizations, and in some cases, even uh, prediction type models. And, and that's kind of the second phase that we look at. And then looking from a, a data scientist perspective, applying advanced uh, statistical analysis and new techniques some of which are proprietary to, to TIG, some of which we go out and we seek uh, third-party um, support for, and we apply those analyses and techniques to this data source and ultimately to the business intelligence and, and that knowledge that we're able to glean through our engagement process. And that allows you, in, in sum, to gain new insights into what your data can do for you. Maybe even things that you haven't envisioned that your data could be able to do for you before. This gets down into more of the prescriptive and you know, without specifically going into industry or using a use case or, or sample, uh, may be tough to visualize. But you know, we talked about retention rates and education. Uh, you talked about use cases in healthcare. New insights, new measures, new metrics, which will allow you to navigate your organization um, through difficult times, excel you uh, to, to new heights, um, or potentially even into new markets. So this is our approach as it relates to you know, our big data and building a business analytics strategy, and it's, it's worked very well for us. So hopefully, if you know, you can draw some correlation to where you may be at today in your own strategy um, and, you know, apply maybe something similar to what you're doing today. So I'll leave you today with a few thoughts about TIG. 
maybe draw some uh, maybe able to draw some correlations to where we we may be able to partner or work together. We've been around the industry for about 36 years. We are absolutely focused on helping our customers achieve their overall goals by working with them to create a comprehensive digital strategy. Really focused on helping organizations drive innovation, create intelligent, simple, and secure business tools. We have a, a, a incredible partner ecosystem that we work with, um, from the likes of Click all the way to Splunk and, and really everyone in between, particularly in the analytics space. It's one of our strong points. Our, our partners really help um, help us be as innovative as we possibly can on behalf of our customers. I, I believe that our engagement strategy is one of the best that you'll find out there. It, it really is focused on uh, helping empower organizations to uh, overcome their business challenges. And we have a dedicated and comprehensive approach to uh, help co companies achieve digitization, whether it's across a multitude of departments or really from an industry as a whole. And, and lastly, we are built on and, and driven by diversity. Uh, we are a minority-owned business and uh, have the opportunity to realize those benefits with you. So as we wind down our session today, I just wanted to reiterate our thanks uh, for joining us for today's webinar on, on the value of, of data analytics. Uh, if you do have any additional um, you know, comments, questions, feel free to share them with us. Uh, we are taking questions during this particular session, and I'll address those in a second. Uh, lastly, if you do have an immediate need for a, a business uh, analytics uh, education session for a data warehouse project, uh, we have a series of workshops and assessments of which um, we think are, are incredibly valuable and can help demystify and simplify uh, leveraging our existing processes and expertise. Uh, to help you achieve that outcome that you're looking for. So info at TIG.com, feel free to send an email and we'll hook you up with the right account executive and solution architect to be able to help walk you through your particular uh, use case. With that, let's take some questions for the field and uh, thanks again for joining today. All right, everyone, let's uh, hop into some questions uh, post today's webinar. Um, got a few of them through the channel here, and we'll just go through them uh, fairly quickly and uh, answer them as, as completely as we can. So the first question that we have, um, you know, what happens if, if an organization is really unable to identify, you know, an area of business analytics or maybe doesn't have time to uh, analyze their business for business analytics is, I think, what it's kind of alluding to. Uh, one of the things that, that we do is we sit down with our customers and we go through a workshop style session. So, you know, I'll, I'll tell you how we do it and, uh, you know, you can even apply this internally. And what we do is in this workshop, we go through and, and we talk and, and really understand the intricacies of the business, the KPIs, the metrics that ultimately that organization is looking to achieve, where the goals are. Uh, we sit down with different department heads and, um, you know, begin to understand some of the challenges that are associated with the business, whether it's in growing or there's an operating cost. And then um, we highlight a couple different areas that we feel are going to be most impactful for doing a, a, a business analytics uh, data production uh, assessment. And what we're able to do is, is then come back with a formulated plan of, you know, based on the data that's available, based on the particular business problem, and then ultimately leveraging these particular tools or, um, you know, labor or consulting services, whatever the case may be, uh, we would be able to produce an outcome that looks like, you know, X, which could be, um, you know, how to reduce, um, you know, or increase floor optimization or, uh, how to increase, uh, you know, lingering times in, in a casino, which ultimately leads to people spending more money, um, how to optimize, uh, you know, machine placement uh, to ensure the most amount of traffic goes by vending uh, systems. You know, different number of use cases that you can apply, but, you know, ultimately we sit down with a workshop-style session, bring multiple department heads together, and uh, obviously go through the, the key metrics of that business as a, uh, you know, looking to, to satisfy there. 
A uh, second question that we had uh, comes around security controls and, and big data. Um, yes, obviously, uh, you know, taking all this information, aggregating it into a data warehouse or making a series of data lakes, um, you know, it's it uh, can be a significant area for exposure as it relates to security, particularly what type of data is in there. You know, what I'm going to go back to here is when we talked about, um, you know, data organization, data structure, uh, knowing what is going inside of your data warehouses, and and in through that, you would apply access controls um, for either groups or individuals with access to that data. And in some instances, you may choose to apply no access uh, to you know the bulk of the group and only have machine accounts that can go in there can uh, produce anonymized type results based on services so that during a production instance there's really no way for an individual to uh, use credentials um, you know intentionally or, or otherwise in a malicious fashion and so there are different ways that we can deal with security controls it depends on your region depends on uh, you know, the compliance that you're ultimately obligated to uphold, different states, the different countries have different parameters. Um, but one of the things that we uh, traditionally do in, in our projects is when we design, um, you know, a use case and we're constructing the data and moving it into a warehouse, um, what we do is we align to the organization security policy, generally already set. If it's not set, then, then we help them expand it into uh, you know taking consideration big data and ultimately you know how third parties impact that and obviously how regulations impact that and we apply a series of controls through the different stages of the data and ultimately you know again highly leverage uh, machine accounts and service accounts um, things that will have uh, you know limited viewing access or can produce anonymized data so that individuals don't get access into it so those are some things that you can do, um, you know, very high level. Not always the case where you can run anonymized data. Sometimes you need to have specifics. So um, you really have to look at the individual use case, the the person, the permissions. And, and obviously, I'll say another thing here is is monitoring that data source to see the types of queries that are being run, where they're being run from, who they're, um, you know, who is running those queries. Um, controlling whether that data is exportable and which fashion it's exportable, and ensuring that you just have overall good security, um, you know, security, proactive security practices, things what I'm trying to say here. And uh, you'll be able to identify if people are, um, you know, essentially doing things they should not be doing, um, you know, if, or if you're underneath a, a long term type of attack from uh, either internal or external. And with that, I think that, that concludes the questions for today. Uh, again, if uh, you do have any you know, business analytics, big data needs, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Info at TIG.com. We'll happily uh, hook you up with one of our account executives and uh, one of our solution architects to put together, uh, you know, put together some, uh, some discussion points, maybe some of the workshops that we talked about, and help you get off and running. With that, thank you for joining today's webinar, and we'll talk with you later.